What's going on, y'all? Down South 77 here again, and this is Three Star Draw. This is an adult collector channel where we focus on G.I. Joe and G.I. Joe related things, primarily G.I. Joe classified. Every now and then I'll do a little bit of news, but I don't do a lot of that unless I've got an opinion on it, because by the time I can get a video on, out on news, you've probably seen it blowing up your news feed all day anyway, and I just give my uh, take on it. And then we will also take a look at some figures and some toys from other lines that I like. I pick stuff up here and there, kind of branching out and picking up some stuff here and there other than G.I. Joe that I'm into. Today is one such video. I am excited. I've been looking forward to doing this video for quite a while. And this is a figure that I've been wanting since I first saw it, I didn't immediately pre-order it, but it wasn't too long after it was announced. I, I pre-ordered it. I think I ordered it in early January. That sounds right. I know it was January. I think it was like the third or something that I went ahead and pre-ordered it. But I ordered the NECA Alex Murphy RoboCop figure. This is a figure that... uh really does speak to my childhood trying to figure out kind of how to phrase it i watched robocop so many times when i was a kid my mom took me to see robocop that's how awesome my mom was she took me to robocop we saw commando rambo like commando she took me to commando so my mom my mom ruled she took me to all those movies but this was a movie that I watched again and again. It's in my top 10 favorite movies, easily, probably in the top five. And when I saw this figure was announced, we've never had anything like it. Go ahead and grab the uh, box here. Show the box off a little bit. It's the got the OCP logo on there, the RoboCop Ultimate, Alex J. Murphy. And every time in my head when I have tried to say this, I always say Alex P. Keaton. Anyway, so there's the uh, front there. This is the side of the box that's got him geared up in his, uh, I don't know, it's not really a riot uniform, but it, that's that, like their basic attire for that movie. It's, sim it's similar to a riot uniform of our day to day. Here's the other side, pretty much same thing. One's visor down, one's visor up. And then let's look at the meat and potatoes. This is the back of the box. This is why I wanted this figure. We have never had anything like this before as far as RoboCop figures. And if you know me, if you heard me talk, um, you know how much... I love RoboCop, and I really wish we could get a uh, line of figures that were or that is based on the movie, especially the first movie. I'll take the second movie. We got to forget the third movie ever happened, but the one especially. Uh, I want a line that's similar to Classified that has uh, the accessories. I, I want a Clarence Boddicker figure so bad. So bad, I want a Clarence Boddicker. I don't know if anybody would ever jump on board with that. They're just like regular dudes, or like they're just a, a group of bad guys. So before we uh, open this guy up, I've got everything I think that I need for a NECA opening. I have a pocket knife. I have a pair of snips. I have a pair of very long nose needle nose pliers and I got a hair dryer and a lot of noise down there. Uh, that's, that's what I'm going to use for this guy. So I'm going to run down real quick, just in case you don't know what RoboCop is come out in 1987. It is one of the greatest masterpieces of eighties action cinema undisputed it might not be the king but it's it's own up there uh love this movie it takes place in the future in detroit detroit is run down completely crime ridden uh it's falling apart everybody's just about moved out of it sounds a lot of like regular detroit from what i hear 
Yeah, sorry about that. I don't know if you heard that, but I think my dog wakes until I uh, start making a video to bark at the neighbors. So back to Detroit. Uh, it's basically in shambles, and somebody has the wise idea to sell the running of the police department to this giant corporation that makes, basically they make military hardware, research and development, whatever. They take over the police department, kind of the way that uh, prison systems have been privatized here, but with a whole lot more corruption. And if you know anything about it, that's pretty damn corrupt. The guy that is running the show for OCP, Omni Consumer Products, is actually in cahoots with the main villain that is helping destroy old Detroit and is preying on all the citizens. And the guy is a notorious cop killer by the name of Clarence Boddicker. He's one of the best non super powered, non horror movie villains that we have ever gotten uh, played by the awesome Kurtwood Smith. I don't know if we've ever had a Kurtwood Smith figure in anything, but uh, we need one. So Alex Murphy is a cop that gets transferred into the most crime-ridden ridden division in that city. Uh, they keep losing cops by the day to Clarence Boddicker and various other criminal organizations. And he runs afoul of Clarence and his gang, and they pretty much blow him to pieces with an assortment of shotguns and small arms fire. Is one of the most graphic shooting scenes that has ever been put to film, and I've seen most of them. Uh, you, it, it's pretty violent, and that's why I wanted this figure because it looks like it captures it perfectly. They OCP is trying to develop some kind of urban deployment weapon to help get everything under control. OCP is getting ready to raise all of Detroit and build a brand new sparkly clean Detroit. And they are trying to develop a, some sort of a robot police to police the new city because they don't want all the crime in the new city. Little do they know that the main guy running that's actually second in charge of the company but he makes most of the decisions, is in cahoots with Clarence Boddicker and has also made a deal with Clarence to run crime in the new city. They bring in, uh, they have another machine that said bad corporate guy develops and they can't get it right and winds up murdering an executive in the boardroom and the, the, his boss is pissed off, in steps a guy with another idea that's been developing a cyborg policeman, which is what Alex Murphy turns into. They, he's barely alive, and they turn him into RoboCop. And the rest of the movie is about RoboCop remembering his past life and remembering who he was, and it kind of, kind of comes into a... Uh, morality and soul versus programming and machinery kind of thing and it unfolds and he goes after he remembers Clarence's gang and what they did to him and he goes after them and by default unravels the web that leads to the uh, end where he does get the main bad guys fantastic movie I'm sure you've seen Robocop if you're watching this but if you hadn't by all means when I'm finished with this check out Robocop I did not open the front of the box because we're going to save that for just in a few minutes so let's take a look at Alex P. Keaton alright this is the first video with the uh, new microphone set up over here so I hope uh, it's the first unboxing video anyway so I hope uh, everybody can hear this okay let me know how this sounds uh, swap microphones because I was having a little bit of trouble with not being able to get the other one close enough to me uh, it just did not pick up deep voices very well so I, I swapped mics so I hope this one works a little bit better and maybe a little bit clearer so I'll cut some light on when we start opening this guy but let's go ahead and take a look in there this is uh what he looks like you got you actually get three heads with him uh 
I'm not showing up too well, but I'm afraid if I turn this light on, we're going to have a lot of glare. Yeah. So you can kind of see he's got several hands, has a blood splatter. Uh, he's got a bloody stump. He's got another bullet riddled vest there. Got a uh, regular unhelmeted head and he's got the, uh, you just blew my arm off head. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to slice that tape. had a loose hand in there somewhere so we'll go ahead and set this box over here i didn't have any cool futuristic uh displays or anything for the background this looks pretty cool it's a little scene right here like the alleyway it's uh looks like the alleyway where robocop shot that dude in the dick let's take a look at him in the package there a little bit better view of all of the stuff he comes with and this hand is inside the vest there it fell so i am going to go ahead and get him loose and cut these twist ties off uh, there's a uh, this guy it looks like he's got two two twist ties in there i don't know get these things off and we'll get him out and check him out all right, let's take a look at Alex J. Murphy, badge number 0D583948, 4E09. Uh, kind of like how they worked that in at the end. A little uh, Easter egg there, E09. Got a two in there somewhere. So this is uh, what he looks like. Get him out of the box here. Uh, this is the outfit that they wore evidently it was so bad in old detroit they pretty much just wore bulletproof vests all the time a lot of damn good that did him nice wrinkles there uh fantastic sculpting this is uh this just snaps on on the vest there that's why it's all kind of cockeyed i would imagine uh, good sculpting there on the uh ribbed on the body armor as usual with these guys, you get the uh, double jointed elbows nicely hidden there. You got the sleeves. I don't know. I guess that's a sleeve. No, it's not a sleeve. I guess it's uh, elbow armor. I never really noticed that in the movie the many times I've seen it. I never noticed the elbow armor. So here on his shoulder, have the OCP patch. You get the focus there. There we go. OCP, Detroit Police, a nice Omni Consumer product logo there. Got the high collar, got the dark uh, tabs there, holding the vest on at the top at the shoulders. Got his utility belt, and I don't think any of that comes out. That looks all, all sculpted in. That's black on the belt there. Got, a, looks like three magazine pouches, handcuffs, flashlight got his holster and then of course uh, knee pads boots got the uh double jointed there yep double jointed on the knees as well i have not tried to flex this guy or do anything with him i know these uh these figures are pretty tight a oh, good ratchet there i don't know if you can hear that a little bits of paint flaking off of him I'm not gonna go too far with that knee but it moves pretty good i have not heated him up yet i'm going to heat him up if i encounter any major difficulties it's a nice steady pressure there on that elbow i'm not gonna go much further with that without heating him up because that's what these things do <laughs> so did not look at his helmet yet and really nice sculpt helmet you can see all of the lines in the pieces of the helmet there where it's assembled see a couple rivets there you got the chin strap it goes all the way around there 
and the same on both sides. Nice paint detail there on the silver on the uh, chin strap. And again, the visor does flip up as you saw on the box. Eyes look really good. I mean, this looks, it looks spot on. This looks just like Peter Weller. Looks, I mean, there's you couldn't see this and say, oh, well, that kind of looks like Murphy. Like, no, that's that's him. Uh, nice, well-centered eyes. He's got the blue eyes. Uh, he's got a very kind of pronounced nose. They captured that really well. A really well-done figure. Uh, the arms are, they move pretty good. Let's see how they... Do have ball joint in there? It's like creaking. I don't know if you heard that. I'm not gonna go too fast with that. I am. I am gonna heat him up a little bit. And arms. Once you get it broke loose, it's a little. It's not floppy. It moves pretty easy. Holds its pose. There goes pretzel. I guess the neighbor, the other neighbor, is home. All right, well, so uh, while Pretzel was in full alert mode, I did go ahead and hold him under the, or oh, in front of the hair dryer for a few seconds. To see if I could loosen these joints up. Do not, that, uh, that, that joint doesn't have much movement there. You don't think you want to go too far with that one, with that forward elbow joint there. Yeah, knees are knees are good once you heat them up. Put a little heat on them. So that, yeah, knees work. Knees are nice. I got this uh, above the boot cut there. That's not a big fan of that. The uh, the boot does not swivel itself. This whole thing here swivels. Uh, that's the only thing I don't really care for how it looks, but it does kind of fit with the with the figure, with the bottom of the the thigh guards there and the thigh armor. So and he stands, he stands pretty good. Uh, not that you need him, you're going to need him standing a whole lot. So let's set him there and let's take a look at what he comes with. Now in the movie, he did a uh, gunslinger move where he would uh, sling his pistols around or his pistol around and uh, on his finger and his from his uh, son watched a TV show called TJ Laser and he did the gunslinger thing where he did that and holstered his gun and he actually comes with two different guns. These are not the same pistol. Uh, this one looks like it might be a a nine millimeter or maybe a forty five. This one looks like maybe a another smaller subcompact nine millimeter or a, a three eighty. Got a little bit of paint on them there. Trigger is painted chrome. A little bit of chrome on the handles there. I don't know if that's I don't know if that's supposed to be there. It catches the light pretty well. I don't know what that would be. It's not even enough to be screws in the the uh, handle pieces. Uh, do have chrome barrels or steel, probably polished steel. This was made in '87, so uh, this was also one of the first guns or the first movies that we got to see the Desert Eagle RoboCop's gun that he got when he was turned into RoboCop it was actually a modded automatic desert eagle i'm not sure what caliber it was supposed to be probably 44 it's a 44 or 50 take a look at his hands here comes with this splayed right hand that is for putting the pistol on there where he is slinging the pistol around before he holsters it and we didn't look at the holster we're going to look at it real quick holster does open it looks like this is the one that actually fits down in there let's see if we can get that to close i did not really put a lot of heat on that you know you gotta you gotta heat up the bottom 
part of the holster there, not the snap, and snap that in there. I'm not going to fool with that for this sake here. We're just going to put it in there. So that's what that hand's for, is for, uh, it's for Wyatt Earp in the pistol there, or probably Doc Holliday in the pistol. So we'll look at his non-helmeted head. If you just want him, uh, before he puts the helmet on, he doesn't wear it the whole movie. And actually, uh, Clarence Boddicker takes it off of him and slaps it on a, one of his goons named Emil, who later ter gets turned into liquid goo uh, via toxic waste. Nice sculpting there on the hair. Again, they do a fantastic job doing the hair. Looks like there's a couple different paint apps there. It's mostly brown. Uh, you can see everything is very much where it's supposed to be with that. You get the, the same eyes. The head looks very good. Now, let's take a look. I know what you want to see. Let's take a look at his other hands. He's got trigger hands for for each hand. He's got a left and a right uh, trigger. They look to be pretty much the same hand. The left hand looks like it might be a little more closed. Uh, same idea, though. It's their, their trigger hands. All right. Let's look at the head first. This is the head from when he is getting taken apart. Screaming head. He's got his eyes closed. He's he's getting shot a bunch of times right here. So nice paint apps around the eyes where he's they're distressed. See in his mouth where he's screaming there. There's paint on the tongue. Uh, the roof of the mouth doesn't look like it's painted, but the tongue is and the teeth look good. That's all we're really going to see when you've got this head on him. Got the blood splatter up there on the top. And same same uh, paint apps there. Looks good. Fantastic sculpting. So this is alternate body armor that he comes with that you can snap on him. I mean, it looks, it looks like I could stick my finger in there and come back with blood on it. That's how good this looks. And you just, uh, other side, it's like we've seen with some of the Joes. Trip wires, our armor is that way. You can just snap it on. And those actually go in pretty well. That actually, well, they did. Not that all, I mean, they fit close enough without having them actually snapped on there. You don't even really have to snap them on. But that's his uh, alternate armor. Now... Let's take a look at, actually, let's take a look at this first. This is an alternate hand. And this is, of course, where uh, Clarence knocks him down and he steps on his hand. And this is what's left of his hand after Clarence Boddicker takes a shotgun to it. Very nice looking uh, blood splatter there. If Again, you've seen the movie, if you hadn't, that's pretty much what it looks like. And then, after they go to work on him, this is his right arm. Nice and uh, blown off. You can actually see in there a little bit of a peg there that's, you know, probably the top part of the bone in that arm. Yeah, I've been messing with my nails. Don't look at that. So, turn that around. And I'm guessing this arm just snaps on. Just pegs on, it looks like, because it replaces. I mean, it, it goes in, it replaces the whole arm. So, we're going to, first off, see if we can pop a different head on him. And if I can do it without breaking that visor, that's what I'm worried about swapping these heads is my, I've got giant sausage fingers and I'm worried about breaking that visor. So let's go ahead and look at his regular head. I may have to actually heat this up. Yep, I'm going to, well... I won't, I just tell you what, I won't put it all the way on because we want to see the other one on him anyway. You get the idea. 
You don't want to keep having to stop and heat and reheat. So it's going to fit down a little bit closer because I didn't have it snapped on there because I don't want to snap this neck peg. And I think on these, the whole thing may come off. The whole neck may come out. I'm not sure on these. So we're going to take a look at this head on him. And I am going to heat this head up. So there we go. Got that on there. Wondering what I did. I just grabbed the head with these things and heated the uh, the socket with the with the blow dryer a little bit. That's going to be the way to uh, do these neckers for me anyway. Um, they're just to the. That's why I want action figures of of this property because these are they look fantastic. They're done right, but that you can't play with them right you can just kind of pose them so we're going to go ahead and do that and we're going to go ahead and i'm going to show let's see what will we do let's go ahead and put let's put a different hand on him shall we i don't know about y'all but that looks like that hurts to me yeah it looks fantastic said i'm sorry i keep stopping this and swapping accessories out but you've already seen me snap michael myers knife in half trying to get it into one of these hands so i'm going to uh continue to do it that way i took the wrong one off didn't i So we'll see if we can put a gun in his hand. Surely the gun won't snap. But I'm going to have to heat that hand up. All right, we'll put the little gun in his hand there. Uh, that's really the way to go. Is you get, you got to apply heat to these things. Now, he doesn't actually have his gun in this scene. I just wanted to do that so you get an idea of what he looks like holding it. Fits in there pretty good. Well, like I said, this is the smaller of the guns that he comes with, the two pistols he comes with. But you can see you get a, you can get his finger in there on that chromed cr trigger. And I bet he wishes he had that gun in this scene, though. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and let's do something else with him here. All right, what I was going to do is I'm going to put the, uh, the blown-off arm in and swap vests you are going to have to pop the head off it looks like to get this vest off the arm come out easy i figured it would it just it just pops in i just uh, pulled on it gently raised it up and it, it kind of popped right off and i'm glad it's supposed to actually i was wrong you have to take both arms off to get this vest off so while we're doing that let's go ahead and take a look at the undershirt there uh, that's what he's got before he slaps his body on, body armor on over the top of it. Uh, it does have a nice paint app there for the uh, undershirt, t-shirt underneath. So that's what you can you can see what he looks like without the vest on. Now let's do the damn thing. All right, there he is, folks. That's what you came to see. That is Alex Murphy getting shot apart there's what he looks like with the blown off arm on you do not get much movement in that shoulder there with this arm on but you don't really need much it looks like if you can see that um divot there i guess is what you might call that in the body armor it's really meant to fit that way if you move it much uh, it pops out, it hits the, the clasp there on the armor where it pokes out. It's come undone. I did heat that, and I had it snapped in better. You get it snapped in, you get a little bit more. But this is pretty much the only way you saw that in the movie, right? Like it was when he was getting, when he was getting shot, that is, um, that's the only way you really saw that arm. So that's the way it is meant to hang. But, I mean, just that whole package there. It looks, it looks great. Uh, this figure is well worth the money. A little flex of paint there. 
Uh, and I mentioned I, I had this figure on pre-order. I did have it on pre-order. I, I, I ordered it on January 3rd at BBTS. Uh, I wanted to get it other place, but it was their pre-orders, I guess, were sold out. And I checked one or two places. BBTS did have it, so I pre-ordered it, and it was due in January. That's why I wanted to go ahead and get it. Well, it got pushed back to arriving in February. And February came and went, and it is pushed back to March on a pre-order. I'm moving this thing by hand while it's sitting on a Lazy Susan. Never mind that. So, again, it it, uh, said arriving in March. Well, I'm going to give away a trade secret here, and you may or may not know this. Folks, if you're buying NECA or Super 7, check Best Buy. I ordered this guy from Best Buy. They had him in stock in store, not near me. It was a store in Georgia. Uh, it was probably a store about, I don't know, 200 and, I don't know, 225 miles away. They had him there. They didn't have him in any near me. So I had him shipped. I ordered him from Best Buy on, I think, Sunday or Monday. Monday, I think, and this is Thursday when I'm doing this. So I've been waiting on this figure for three months. And I I got him from Best Buy in three days. They have a lot of NECA and a lot of Super 7 Ultimates at Best Buy. It's a place a lot of people don't think to check, but I I deal with Best Buy a lot. I got a Best Buy card. Um, It's a good place for collectibles, and even if your store doesn't stock them, they probably have them. They've actually got a couple Super 7 Ultimates that I want to get. Um but I don't want to pay full price for them, so I'm waiting for a sale. They actually had the um, the Hiss Transformers with the Baroness, the Megatron. They have it listed on their website for $17.99. Now, before you run over there, it's sold out. It's been sold out. It was at one time twenty six ninety nine, and I was going to buy it then, but it was sold out then, too. I've never seen it come in stock but they've lowered the price to $16.99. So let me move that and scoot it out of the way there and move these things that I didn't realize were still in frame. And we can kind of get a look at at him, everything that he comes with there. Um, this is a fantastic figure. I actually like it more than I like the uh, Michael Myers figure. And you heard how much I talked about how much I love Michael Myers. So I'm going to do one last thing uh, before I get out of here. Got to, because you got to. I'll show you how this arm pops right off of there. As you guys didn't get to see that. And this one pops right in. You know, you might have heard that snap. It goes right in. I tell you, this paint actually, I mean, it's so good. It actually kind of feels sticky. So we're going to get Murphy down like this because this is kind of how he was in the movie. And that's kind of how you see him there. And... I must say, if you're a fan of RoboCop and you don't get this figure, if you don't get it, it's the only Murphy figure that I've seen. What is it? Inconceivable. Because it is. It's it's really great. So I've got to do one last thing before I get out of here. I don't have a Clarence Boddicker, as I've mentioned. So... I had to find a stand-in for Clarence Boddicker. And I looked at my classifieds, and there was really only one guy that stood out that was enough of a son of a bitch to do this to Murphy. And that's Sebastian Blood, because I believe he would do it. So I'm going to... I'm not going to pose him and do it exactly how it was in the movie, but I got Major Blood here with... Cover girl shotgun, and I think if I can get Major Blood to stand, you can probably imagine what happens next. Can you hear that in your head? If you can't, I'm gonna see if I can't provide it for you. I will see you guys next time on 
three star draw. Cops don't like me, so I don't like 